Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Um, I'm gonna start a video series that explains how to build a Miata motor. Um, and what we're gonna be building is a fully forged internal motor that's ready for boost, but apart from different components, all of the supplies if you're rebuilding a stock one as well. There's lots of redneck tricks on the internet if you go looking for ways to build a motor on the cheap. Do that at your own uh, discretion. Um, I like to do it correctly, so I've spent a fair amount of time investing in the correct equipment. Some of it makes sense to buy, some of it makes sense to just take to the machine shop to get done. In terms of measurement tools, you want to get all of the correct gear um, to, to be able to put your motor back together. You always want to double check your machine shop's work. He may be the greatest machinist on the planet, it never hurts to double check and just make sure you know there wasn't a slip up. Uh, cleanliness is the most important thing. So if you don't have a work area set up, uh, set one up before you start. Um, I built these shelves and benches so I could keep everything organized. This is all of the parts I need for this motor and this is my work area for this motor. If I have to do any grinding or metal work on it, I do that at a different location so I don't get any shavings thrown on it. Um, it, I just can't, can't stress that enough. It's incredibly important to keep everything clean. So, this is the donor motor that we're going to be starting with. And this is pretty much best worst case scenario. Um, this motor is really whooped, uh, very rusty. These are the pistons that came out of it. Now, for what we're going to be doing, that's perfect because that means that the owner was able to get this at a very affordable price and it's completely fine because we're going to be remachining the whole thing. Uh, so I'm going to go over all of the stuff and we'll have a, you know, the video series and we'll go over the tools and what you need, what you don't need. Um, to start with though, if you're going to do this yourself, the first two things that you do need is you need a local machine shop that you trust that can do work for you and um, if you're doing a modified build, you need to find your local tuner in your area who's got a dyno who's able to help you. Uh, a, a good tune makes or breaks a car. So you can have all the right pieces, put everything together, and if it's tuned incorrectly, your best case scenario, you're just missing horsepower you could have. Worst case scenario, boom. So, step one here. Um, we got this motor completely apart and we measured a couple of things just to make sure that this block is a valid candidate for a rebuild. So, uh, the rough surface on the deck here, not a problem. We're going to have the machine shop deck the block and clean that up. We measured the bore of each of these cylinders just to make sure no one had already done some machine work on this block in the past because we don't know its history. Um, you don't want to go buy pistons that are too small for the block that you got. So, sure enough, these were all 83 millimeters. So this is an OEM bore, so we were able to get one size up in, in uh, pistons and be good to go. Um, you don't want to jump bigger than you need to, purely so that if you have an issue, you can go back and bore it out again. On the 66 here, we've already bored that motor three times, so I'm, if I have to do it again, we'll be getting another block. Um, excuse me. So don't jump to the, the, the biggest piston. You're not really going to be gaining any power out of that tiny bit of displacement that you gain, and you're robbing yourself of the opportunity to go back and do it another time if something happens. Basically, when we're, we're building a forge motor, we're getting new pistons and new rods. So we don't care about the condition of any of those parts. We're getting new bearings. We don't care about that. The crank can easily be turned down if there's a minor defect in any of these journals, and you can get an oversized bearing. So not a big problem. There's a small nick in this one right here. It's not really an issue. We can just turn it down and get different bearings. The block, the only thing that you're really looking for is you're looking for major cracks and scores in the cylinder walls that are so deep you, that you, you, know, you can't overbore it. This one was fine. There's a couple little scuffs and stuff, but we're overboring this to 84 millimeter pistons. Um, so it's, it's not an issue whatsoever. What to look for on a crank? The, like I said, the journals can be repolished or more undersized if that's needed. On all of the rod points, check to make sure there's no 
major discoloration. If it had, if the motor had a spun rod bearing, sometimes these areas of the crank will turn blue or gold from the extra heat that they um, experienced, and that could be a symptom of a damaged crankshaft. This one looks in wonderful condition. Um, I do not know the history of this motor. I do not. It you know turned over. All the pieces were in it when I got it. I do not know why it was taken off the road, but it does not appear to be for a bottom end failure. So everything here looks, apart from being a little dirty, looks fine and ready to go. You can also check the ends of the rods for the same thing, any discoloration. Um, everything here moves freely, all of the wrist pins are loose, so again this leads us to believe that this motor did not die due to a bottom end failure, so we have a, a healthy block that's a good starting point. Okay, so stuff that's information that's hard to find when you're building a new motor. Um, so you've located your machinist. Uh, ask around local groups, um, car restoration shops in your area, see who they use. Um, the internet, you know, ask around, find someone who's reputable that that has a good rapport and you can can trust. What do you need to bring him? So you need to bring him the engine block, and you need to bring him the piston you're going to be putting into the engine. A good machine shop will double check and measure the pistons, and sometimes even number them for the bore that they machine that piston to fit in. You can't just tell them I'm going to be using piston X dimension and punch a hole in it. It needs to be really precise. So buy your piston that you're going to use. Bring the piston and the block to the machine shop. If you are doing uh, hardened fasteners, you need to re-line bore the mains. So you need the fasteners installed first before you bring it in. Um, if you are doing a four-cylinder, you do not need to balance the rotating assembly. We'll get into that uh, later on. If you're doing a V8, he'll want to balance the rotating assembly with your new pistons and rods. So you'll need to have all of that before you bring it to the machine shop. All right, so that's our, our intro to building a motor. We'll do a new video as, with each step uh, as we go along in this process, so stay tuned. If you have questions, please ask away. Uh, I'll make sure to cover that in the, in the next video. Um, I'll go into as much detail as I can. Uh, when I started learning how to build these, I found the information was not readily available, so I thought it'd be good to do a step-by-step -step guide of every single little detail with the tools, the part numbers, and everything you need to, to rebuild your motor. So. Hope you guys enjoy and uh, hope it's helpful for you.